Hi, I'm Terry Wehent. This is my tiny house. I live at Tiny Lots on the Prairie in Decatur, Texas. I've lived in my tiny house a year. I love it. I'm an empty nester. I had lived in a house and an apartment with my kids and raised them. I decided rent was ridiculous and I wanted a house, but it didn't need a whole house, so a tiny house was perfect. And I went and did some research, visited a builder, and saw what I liked, and it just worked out perfectly. My daughter was a huge help in helping me downsize. Speed round, yes, no, yes, no, stays or goes, stays or goes. Um, because even after I downsized, we put everything in storage for six months, I still had to get rid of a bunch of stuff because it just was more than what would come in the house, which was, was fine. And my son helped me build my deck and my walkway. And my dad's been up a couple of times to see the house. Um, but yeah, no, they're, they're very supportive. You know, and my friends all think it's really cool. It's not something they would do, but for me, they all think it's very cool. My tiny house is eight feet wide and 32 feet long. I will have been in my house for one year on November the 2nd of 2021. It was built by Peter Hugler at Indigo River Tiny Homes. My tiny house is blue, which is my favorite color. I picked it out. My builder was a little skeptical, but I told him it was perfect. And it matches my car, it matches a lot of things inside the house, it matches my furniture on my deck next to my house. Okay, let me show you some features of my house. I have a shed that's built onto the end. That's the full height of my house. So I still have some decking to finish to go around the end of my house so that I'm actually able to access my shed easily without a ladder, but it opens up, has my hot water heater, my Christmas decorations, and a few other little knickknacks. This is the way to my deck and my outside living room. This is my outdoor living space. I've had friends up for parties. I sit out here to read. I've had family up. I actually got all of this deck material from a friend that uh, had to sell her tiny house. My son and his friends took it all apart, moved it over here, and uh, voila, I have a deck and a walkway. It's what I wanted. I love it. It fit my house. I bought furniture to fit it, and uh, now I have a deck and an outdoor living room. Got this delivered. Uh, I don't know. This is off Facebook Marketplace, but it's blue. I have blue cushions for these chairs, by the way. <laughs> That's pretty much all there is outside. If you want to come take a look inside my house, follow me. Welcome to my tiny house. The house basically started as being built around this rug. That determined everything. I had to plan around the rug, for the couch, for the tables, for everything. The original floor plan had the bedroom over here. Peter changed that to put the living room here to accommodate my rug. I didn't want any lofts. I didn't want stairs for old knees. I wanted tall ceilings. I wanted lots of light windows. I have a small little portable fireplace, so I have a mantle. This is my multi-purpose coffee table, extra seating. This was purchased particularly for photographs and stuff to go underneath the television. This cabinet I kept 
I've had it for probably 20 years, painted it black to go in here. The two nightstands were purchased because they fit directly next to the couch in the spaces that I had. Peter put these shelves here, uh, open shelving for stuff to go on. My cow chair, I had two of them, but I only had space for one, so my son got the other one. This was going to be my gallery wall. I only had space for a few pictures, so that's all that made the cut whenever I downsized from my apartment. This one belonged to my grandmother. The one from Venice I kept because I had been there with my sister, drink wine. My window ledges, I asked that they be wide because I could then put all my little trinkets in the windows. My fandelier, I knew I wanted a fan and I wanted a chandelier. And so I started researching on Amazon. And of course, you know, you can get anything on Amazon. And I wanted a ceiling medallion above it. Fandelier got installed without the medallion. And when I got the photograph of it, I wrote back, that's lovely, but there's a medallion in a box that has to be put up there too. So the fan got taken down, the medallion got installed, the fan went back up. I had the ceiling stained dark to match the floor, but yeah, it all got done exactly like I wanted it. This is my miniature kitchen and dining room combo. I knew it wasn't going to be a lot of space. I had specific uh, measurements to fit everything into. This little um, antique French table used to have legs and I wanted to keep it. Peter told me that he could cut the legs off and mount it on the wall. So it's really sturdy. <laughs> and then I bought some bar stools to go underneath it and they were in storage the whole time that I was waiting for my house to be built. So I had my son cut off about seven inches and now of course they are perfect. I had a uh, request from the builder to build me a coffee bar because we had just enough space to the left of the refrigerator that would fit my Keurig, my chef. And so now I have a coffee bar, coffee cups, coffee, a few little canisters because I have limited space in my kitchen. Also underneath, I have a very tall little cabinet where I can put cutting boards and tall pans. And that was the only place that that could go as well. And I have one little drawer there. On the other side, I have my farmhouse sink that I picked out. I have a little bit of stamped metal backsplash. And then I have some deep drawers for storage, my stove. I have kick drawers underneath for towels, etc. So my countertop is recycled glass. My builder had several different colors to choose from and I chose the black and gray and it's got a little bit of sparkle to it. It matched my cabinets, all of my appliances. I have two open shelves for a little bit of dishes. I have some storage at top for appliances that I don't use very often. So I have a little bit of everything that I need, which is perfect for me. I have some storage here, storage underneath the refrigerator. I have an apartment sized refrigerator, which for me is fine. I have storage above the fridge too. So it's perfect for everything that I need. I haven't missed anything that I don't have. I have cooked for Thanksgiving, Christmas. I've cooked for friends, family. I have a two burner cooktop. My stove, I can get a couple of pans in. So I, uh, I haven't wanted for anything that I don't have. So this piece of glass came from the old Hyatt Regency that was downtown, opened in 1981, and I worked there for several years. They had a restaurant called Crystal Cactus, and all of the booths in the restaurant had these panels behind them. And when they renovated the restaurant, they took all of those panels out. They sold these panels for 10 bucks a piece to the employees. So this 70 pound piece of glass, I have been carrying around with me for probably 40 years. And I've used it as a desk. I've used it as a, a sofa table. And when I got ready to do the house, I asked Peter if he could install it like as a, a divider here. And so he's got it installed. And now it's, it's a room divider for me. I've carried it around for 40 years and now it's finally got a purpose. So it means a lot to me. I kept the things that really mattered. 
I kept the things that were really precious. If I didn't need it and I didn't love it, it, it went. It went. I knew how much space I had. I knew how much wall space I had. So if there was two or three things to choose from, there was room for one. I picked the one. The other two went. It was a process of elimination. And once you start making those decisions, they're very easy to make. People think they can't make those decisions and they think they're going to get bogged down making the decisions. And it's, it really gets very easy. I don't have a lot of storage space. So all those things that went on, all those closets went away. <laughs> you know, mountains of clothing that you just don't wear, you don't need, you don't want, went away. A lot of people were gifted a lot of things. I threw away 10 huge black contractor bags of trash to the dumpster at my apartment. And every bag I took, it was just like, wow, what, how did I have this much trash? And I mean, it was, it was eye-opening. It was absolutely eye-opening. This is my bathroom and I have pocket doors on both sides with the opaque panels, which I special ordered because that's what I wanted because that's what I liked. On this side of the bathroom, we decided to have a loft upstairs so that I'd have some storage. Um, that's really the only storage I have besides my cabinets and I also have a pop-up bed. But to get to that storage, I have a small step stool, which I, I use it a lot. I have one tall cabinet in there, I have one tall cabinet in there, I get to that stuff up there and then I get to this step. So I use it a lot and it just goes behind some clothes right there. I left the top of the house completely open. I left this open for air circulation, for uh, moisture circulation. Um, there is a small uh, air dehumidifier in the house. I have a fan that's at that end. And I just like the way it looks. I like my ceiling. I like to be able to look back and forth. And it helps with heat circulation, cool circulation all, all the time. I wanted a little more bathroom space, mainly because I'm a girl. I need room for my stuff, junk, crap, whatever you want to call it. I picked this sink out because I love this sink. It's blue and I knew looking at it every day would make me happy. Peter gave me two options for uh, vanities. The other one was not as attractive, didn't have as much counter space. So I, of course, picked this one because it has more space and more drawers. I also had him put in more shelves on the wall for me. And then, I, of course, I have this cabinet and space up top and the wide window ledges. I have more ledges up here, more ledges up here. Back here is my washer and dryer. I have a fan with a vent and light up above. I run that whenever I shower just to vent the air and the moisture out. Love my washer dryer. My shower is 32 inches square. It has built-in shelves. Peter and I talked about different shower options, sizes and door options. I paid a little extra for the glass door option. I love it. Absolutely love it. Yes. I paid 80000 for my house, all in. There were a lot of custom things that I purchased. My pocket doors were custom. My stove. There were a few other little things. All in was 80000 I put quite a bit down. And now where I live, my um, lot rent's four fifty. dollars It includes water, includes Wi-Fi. I only pay for electricity, which is under $50. Even during the snowpocalypse last February, my electric bill was like 95. People had hundreds and hundreds of dollars in electric bills, but ours were really, really reasonable because we never lost electricity. Thank you. Compared to what I would have been paying in rent for my apartment, I'm still paying way less than what I would have been paying for rent in an apartment. So I'm really happy with where I'm living. I um, can travel, I can go and do things, I can save, and I'm still coming out way ahead. 
a lot of people would say that 80000 is a lot of money for a tiny house. But if you look at how it's made and you look at how it's going to last compared to something else, you know, you get what you pay for. If you have the skills to build this, great, go do it. Look at the kind of windows that I have. Look at the kind of doors I have. Look at the way that it's built. Look at the way that it's insulated. All of the things that are installed in it. You pay for that. You know, I pay for someone to do all of that. I pay for the warranties I have. I pay for the certification that I have. You see people talking about, oh, I can do that for less than that. Mm, no, I don't think so. I don't argue with them on Facebook. Other people argue with them on Facebook. I don't. I know what I got for my money and I'm happy with what I got for my money. My bedroom is back here at the end of the house. I wanted a downstairs bedroom because I didn't want to be doing stairs in the middle of the night or at all. So my bedroom is at the end of the house. I have a huge window, lots of light. My bed is a full size bed. It pops up, so I have lots of storage underneath it. I store winter clothes in the summer, summer clothes in the winter. I had my builder install shelving above my bed. I have cabinets, I have storage up above. I also have shelving at the foot of my bed. And in my closet, I have something very special. I saw this and I asked Peter if he could install it for me and he said yes and he did it. So. I have shoe storage, a whole door of it. All my shoes go here. Just made my closet a little deeper, but I didn't care. But it's very comfortable. I can wake up and see the sun coming in. And again, I have another gallery wall on my uh, bedroom wall. And I have a large mirror that was my grandmother's. I have a jewelry cabinet. I have a few other mementos that I kept. So when you downsize, you don't have to get rid of everything. I kept the things that were precious to me, that were given to me from family members. I, I kept all the important things. So you don't have to get rid of everything. You just keep what's important, what you need, what you treasure. It's, it's, it's doable. It's absolutely doable. I can come help you. <laughs> I live in a community called Tiny Houses on the Prairie. The people that own it live on the property. There's seven tiny houses on this side of the property. I am about 30 to 40 minutes from work. I work on the north side of Fort Worth. But the drive to work is down a very nice highway by fields, green. Um, so it's a pleasant drive. I don't mind the drive to work because I know when I get back, I'm in this nice, peaceful, quiet prairie. It's worth the drive. I plan to stay here. I plan to retire in five or six years and enjoy my house and stay in my house. My family's close. I plan to travel. I don't have any plans to move out of my house unless, you know, Prince Charming walks by and knocks on my door, but I don't see that happening. I'd prefer he doesn't. I'd rather just stay in my tiny house and come and go as I please and live my life. Um, I'm very comfortable in my house. I love my house. our video and for stopping by tiny house expedition i'm alexis and i'm christian don't forget to like comment and subscribe and for more tiny home tours and stories click the videos below and join us on instagram for bonus content including face-to-face -face conversations with us <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there all right thanks guys have a good one